Welcome back to The Daily Rundown on Channel 7 with me, Paul Burgess, and it's something to say time now. The bit of the show that allows our guests to get something off their chest or share a wild and burning passion with you, the viewer. Prayers or mourn, it's as simple as that. So Loz, would you like to kick us off? Yes, um, actually we're, we're coming to you, dear viewers, from the, the beating heart of Manchester. That is Ancoats. Um, so yeah, very um, and very proud. Adoptive Ancotian, if that's the right word. Oh, I like it. it. Yeah, I yes. think so. I think so. Well, um, live it a bit. Um, so a real sad thing, actually, is that um, the Ancoats' oldest building, which is actually an, an 18th century uh, boozer, the Smith's Arms, is due to be ripped down. Um, um, and I, I think it's a bit symbolic of what, quite, or symptomatic of what, quite a lot that's happening in Greater Manchester at the moment. Um, is that um, we're, we're it, now, now that there's this race to redevelop again, um, that I think we're a bit in danger of losing some of the great things about this city. Um, that, um, that in terms of money coming in, it's like, okay, um, let's make everywhere look like spinning fields. It seems mm. to be the kind of thing. Um, and I really don't want everywhere to be like spinning fields. And I don't think the, the people that have, that have um, lived here for generations want that. And, and also people that are, are coming in new don't want, uh, want it all to look like some sort of dreary mall. But yeah, the, the, so the Smith's Arms is, is due to come down. Lots of other buildings like the Aldwick Glance Club has great history over in Salford. The, the Black Horse Hotel has been being ripped down for some kind of dreary flats. Now, it's not that I'm against people having places to live, and we were already talked about this today on the, the show. And the, but the question is, is that um, how do you do that and still make? Uh, how do you do that and still make us a city where you want you want to be? Um, and it's you. It's not just about having a flat. It's also about having places to go, places places to feel at home, places where you can meet. Um, you know, schools and where your your kids can go and be. So. Um, I think it's really important that also for, to keep people in, also in the centre of town, that you want to have some spirit to, um, I think one of the big problems for, for Manchester is that people come in maybe for a couple of years but also find, well, yeah, but it's also getting maybe, a, it's also a little bit kind of dreary now, so we're going to go again. So it's also about how you build up community. Um, the in great, Greater Manchester is now seeing this kind of investment, um, but it's also a lot that's being ripped out. Again, what's happened to Ancoats is that so there's been good places like the estates, like Cardroom Estate, has been has kind of ripped out now. And I think a lot of people who live there are not entirely nos completely nostalgic about it. Yeah, the Cardroom Estate had its problems. Um, However, a lot of uh, that's really close to where we are right now. That's been completely flattened. But also, then a new kind of, um, investment group coming is called Manchester Life. But actually, where the money is coming from is Abu, is Abu Dhabi Investment. Um, so I think it's kind of really interesting that also the the, the councils made this deal with um, with uh, also an investment which has links to Emiratis, which are not necessarily the kind of the the nice the you know the nicest of regimes exactly. So you kind of also ask, well, ask I, I can't what I don't quite get is. Uh, is that where where the where the Labour Council is on all all of this as well? Is that kind of is that on one hand we seem to be taking on the on the kind of the, the whole Labour Labour leadership thing that we've got. Um, uh, you know all the all this this talk about integrity and people like Corbyn, but actually on the lo on the local level we're seeing these kind of these kind of um, deals. We we've yeah we've already used the word dodgy today. I think you introduced that, David. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like uh, yeah, it's the, the, the yeah we're, it's it's also a little, well I'll just say questionable. Um, and, it's, so I think it's a quite. Uh, it's it's. Um, I think it's about time that we started um, saying, 
yeah, we can do better. We also we can we can we can invest and get affordable housing, but we we also don't, shouldn't be losing the spirit of the place. Um, I know there's a group called Manchester Shield, which is set, setting up, which is about trying to also preserve heritage, not in a sort of really kind of dull kind of don't don't touch anything in my backyard kind of way. We're saying that we can still honour the history and the amazing kind of heritage that there is in Great Manchester. Manchester, but but also, but um, and and still move on, but yeah, but not losing um, but not losing some of the assets. So there's, I think there's going to be a bit of a, a there's going to, I, think, I hear there's a protest picnic, picnic planned for this <laughs> for this uh, for this weekend. So we shall see, we shall see where that where that leads. So why is it being knocked down to build new social housing? Well, it's not. So, it's the, not. So it's not social. This is more uh, the Manchester Life uh, develop, Development. So, so apartments it's also, for yeah, sale or whatever. So yeah, it's, right. it's 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 the it's the it's the same. Is it a thing. busy pub? No. Uh, well, it well it hasn't. But well, it's been closed for ages right. now. Um, it's, it's, I mean, this is the thing. It's also you go. You know, people want places to go and drink as well. And also, there's no. Re it's you know, it's it's extraordinary. Go, can you really not make this function in? Yeah. A yeah. neighborhood there are really? a lot of pubs closed down though yeah. aren't there? i mean it, yeah. they, they tried town. to uh, close and move the britain's protection mm. and then some people st stopped it uh, the manchester civic society mm. indeed in 1945 the labor council of manchester wanted mm. to knock down the town hall and had this long boulevard that came down to deansgate something like i don't know something straight out of albert speer or <laughs> something straight out of uh, russia and thank God they didn't have the money to do it. And it's Labour and Conservative councils across the country, I've been to many places, who try and tear down places of historic value. They have no sense, no taste. The people who go into local politics don't know anything about art, architecture, or history. That's the impression I get. And a little bat sheesh in the side, and and then you know they they um in manchester's beginning to look like east berlin i'm glad you're talking david because it is actually your time to talk now and you've used 90 seconds to talk about his issue yeah. oh no his issue is very good <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. here's well, a good I issue though i mean i yeah. could go on about that but i mean my issue was uh, was uh in 1922 uh fritz lang one of the great german film directors made a film called dr mabuza the gambler <laughs> Have you heard of it? No. Dr. Mabuse yeah. the Gambler. Dr. Mabuse is one of the most evil characters in, in Fritz Lang. He, he revived him in 1932 and left him in a straitjacket screaming stuff at the end of the film, uh, Nazi slogans, and he revived him as the spy behind the hotel walls spying on people, an almost Alex Jones type thing uh, in the 1960s. And, but it was the word the gambler. Gambling. Have you ever known somebody who was addicted to gambling? No. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and and um, yeah. That, I think that can be very, a uh, very all-consuming and all, but also something that also people just really want to kind of keep under wraps. Yes. I think there still seems to be a lot of stigma about, particularly that kind. Have of they ever thing. tried to get some cash from you? No. Ah. Uh, now oh. the thing is, the worst thing is when you, you know, I had a friend years ago. And he used to come to me and he'd say, oh, oh, I'm, I'm not being paid for my night job. He's holding up my pay. Can you give me some money quickly? A couple of hundred here. And then the next thing is, my father isn't giving me any money. He's cut me off. Can you give me some money? Can I, I'll pay you back when I get paid for my job. He, you know, you fall for these things because they're really close friends. And then you book a holiday with the friend. Oh, yeah, I've got free accommodation in Malta or whatever. We go on a holiday. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is pay for the flights now, and I'll get it for you for 1500 That goes out. You do that. And it accumulates that, uh, wait a minute, I've just given this person thousands. Now I can afford it, you know. But, and it's like, well, then I could. Um, uh, and, um, and, but it, the, the, and then they leave the city. They, mm. they leave the small city you go and they go to the big city. You know, and they go to the big city and you wonder why they've suddenly moved to the big city. And then they call you and say, ah, I'm homeless, I'm homeless. Can you help me? Can you, give me, can you put me up in a hotel for two days? I'm waiting my, for my father to give me the money to move into this, this place. I said, okay, here's the money. And you get back and then you get a call from the father. Hello. I said, what? You haven't given any money to my son, have you? I said, uh, why? He's addicted to gambling. And you drop. 
and you drop and you go, I trusted that guy mm. and I've just given him thousands, but he's my mate. You know, how can people do that to you? And then it's ages before you get the confession. Yeah. That I lied about everything. That money you gave me to invest in that thing, I could get it back was a lie. That trip I took there, which you lent me to for Christmas, that was a lie. Everything was a lie. I went to the casino and gambled the whole thing. But I'll pay you back. Mm. That's the next step. Then they can pay you back. Yeah, 200 a month, okay. Where's the money? Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 200. You don't get a penny back. Yeah. So the lesson for that is as much as you trust anyone, or like anyone, or feel sorry for anyone, don't give them one penny without some sort of guarantee or getting a ton of references and friends. But when you know somebody, you know them well, but you don't know them on a personal basis, and to find out that they're addicted to gambling, these, these people addicted to gambling, if I say, Lars, yeah, yeah, I'll pay you 400 a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They think they've solved the problem. They don't have the money to give you, but they think, in, in their heads, it's, it's settled. And then you come back, oh, yeah, 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 I'll give you the money. And, and that, that's, that's a real problem. Of course, you end up having to take these people to court or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I mean, um, never do that. Never give money to any friends, even, because, um, I mean, this gambling addiction is a horrible thing. Absolutely. But they all play the victim card. Yeah. They all play like they're a victim of society. I, I mean, I have a family member who owes me about 20 grand and plays the victim card too. So I'm never going to get my money, right? For Because the, they play the victim card. Oh, I have a miserable life. What about my money? And, um, and I don't know. I thought I mean, you might give me some insights into this gambling thing. Yeah, well, well that's, that's kind of the... the Question: In terms of those those type, types of addiction, how do you how, how do you get in, get into to dealing with with that 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 where people have kind of got to, got to in their lives that that you know, that's and I, I mean I think I mean I know various people with various types of addiction in terms of al alcoholism and also but it's also about uh, but I think particularly that's one where there seems to be not that much kind of help out there in terms of how you kind of steer somebody out of that situation because also it's particularly that because of the financial kind of trouble but also it you know because it spills over as well I mean that's that's the thing which is really tough and I think that's I know that's for people who are also dealing with addiction it's also in terms of their their families around them as well you know oh, yeah. and then that's also you know where it's really important, important that there are there's types of useful support that can find the find the, the, the find the way way out I mean it's more people that I know who've also, who've also uh, uh, suffered with alcoholism but also their families have, have suffered you know yeah. Very, yeah well it never just badly. affects you does it yeah, but, but yeah, I mean yeah, this guy badly, this you know, guy this actually guy. I had tons of other people who owed money to too yeah and it's, and then and then one day I was speaking to the guy's father he said, I'm trying to find out how much money he's got in his bank account he's got some money there but never seemed to come to me yeah. and it's like and then why do they have to flee a city mm. Because obviously, the gambling addiction has driven into a yeah. constant life of lies. And, and, and often these people are holier-than-thou people, too. You know, you think very straight, that sort of thing. But... Um, this is addiction for you. I, addiction. Worked I mean, with, I can deal with alcohol. I worked with addiction uh, for two years before I came here. Yeah. And whether it be drugs, alcohol, gambling, whatever addiction is a cruel mistress and does mess your head up mm. and people lying is is a whole part of the making not only making you feel secure in the loaning of the money making themselves feel better about doing it because they can they, they can convince themselves that's the truth i've said but i mm. wasn't the only victim no no there were tons of victims. dozens of them probably. And it's amazing i think they got this it'd make a great movie wouldn't mm. it yeah like robert walker and strangers on a train a character like mm. that the charming did you ever see that no I didn't, I didn't. robert walker no, he no. says uh, mm. hi guy mm. i'll murder your wife if you murder my father and oh the guy yeah yeah it's yeah, a joke and he yeah, gets yeah, off yeah, and he yeah, murders yeah. his wife it's mm. always these charming guys yeah who mm. sort of seem to do it but i think i'm going to start writing the script <laughs> you should uh, we're going to take another short break now but don't go away i'll be back with my guests in just a minute with some of the more bizarre stories which have been making the news today this is the daily rundown on channel seven <laughs> 